today it's the most comprehensive context-based dictionary where we have more than a hundred language combinations. And welcome everyone to the special guest episode of SlaterPod. Joining us today is Theo Hoffenberg. Theo is the founder and CEO of Reverso, a company specializing in language tools, translation aids, language services used by millions online. Hi, Theo. Hi, Florian. It's very nice to be with you. Thanks for taking the time for joining SlaterPod today. So where in the world does this podcast find you today? Today, I'm in Paris, France. In Paris, France. Beautiful, beautiful. It It's... Still heat wave or has it disappeared? No, it's okay. We, we have a nice weather, but not too, not too hot. Got it. All right. So, um, Reverso, tell us about first how, like your professional background, how does one start a company like Reverso and then kind of give us a bit the extended elevator pitch for Reverso for those few of us who don't know uh, the company? So my background is engineering. I uh, studied in Ecole Polytechnique in Paris and... Uh, also, uh, I did some management courses in Stanford, and uh, I, I always been uh, uh, fascinated by language in general. So I, uh, this is something that's it's the combination of all those uh, three factors that brought me to uh, uh, to uh, launch Reverso. Uh, my professional uh, experience is uh, has always been in software, so I only had uh, a couple. Uh, uh, experiences before launching Reverso, but one of them was with Lotus, uh, the, the American company where that I, I helped launch in, uh, in Europe. I remember Lotus very well. We, we used Lotus, uh, Lotus Notes as kind of our translation management system, for lack of a better word, because uh, they started in, like, we being uh, my, my previous company, CLS Communications, back in the mid-90s, right? So it was like the all-in workflow. Yeah, and before that, it was the first uh, uh, the the, the uh, first spreadsheet that uh, was used by professionals. Uh, Lotus one two three. I did not know that. It's a long time ago. That was even before my time. <laughs> All right. So, um, so it, you, what year did you start Reverso? So in nineteen ninety seven. Nineteen ninety seven. Wow. Uh, that, that's when the internet exploded. So so. T tell us a bit more about the origin story. So how did you start it? What was the original kind of thinking behind it? I was a professional in the software industry and I thought uh, that the, uh, the next uh, step with the software would be NLP. So it was at the time nobody used this term and at least uh, nobody in the professional world that were not uh, in research. And uh, I thought uh, that it's the next generation is to take care of the content. And that that's... Um, that's how I uh, decided to uh, to go into uh, into this field, and I I knew how to uh, to design uh, a good quality translation software, and I found a, a very uh, interesting team in Russia, uh, with whom we we started, and that that was uh, how uh, uh, all this uh, began. Uh, it's thanks to the quality of the team that we had, and the design and the the know-how in software publishing. So was machine translation the first application you put online or? Yes, uh, it was. So first we, we did software that you would install on your PC uh, and that could be also customized, integrated into office applications already at the time. And then just a little bit afterwards, we started our first online translation uh, platform, uh, which is now still Reversonet. Uh, with now 80 million users worldwide, but at the time there were not probably not uh, even 80 million users on the web. So, uh, <laughs> and um, and we started uh, to publish on our own site, but also in partnership with uh, uh, with a lot of uh, big portals like Lycos at the time or uh, like um, uh, Orange in, in in France, for example. Orange, yeah, that was a big name here, big telco provider, right? Yeah. And then we, we pioneered also the, the, the translation tool in inside companies used by everyone. Because before that, it was more like a tool for translators or for translation departments. And we created the, uh, uh, the, the new business line of having a tool that is used by everyone in the, in the company. And that uh, a, a, a person, the uh, person in charge of IT or internal communication can spread out in the uh, in the whole company and and have users uh, 
communicate between themselves uh, in different languages or being able to communicate with their, uh, with their counterparts in other places, but with some control by the company, which means that they knew if people were, uh, you know, what type of languages, they were not looking into the content, but more into the, the, the usage and who is using what, etc. And it still exists and it's still a, 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 a flagship product. And that's like what you would call like on-premise, right? So it's not in the cloud. It was both, both it's uh, on-premise and SaaS. It has, we, we always had the two components, uh, on-premise and SaaS. Um, at the time it was more on-premise and now it's more on SaaS, but uh, uh, we have the two capabilities, uh, the two possibilities. Uh, the, the advantage of SaaS is it's much easier to deploy more languages, more new features. And uh, the on-premise is, of course, that it guarantees you a more uh, control. Uh, you can have even air-gapped system if you want, if you are in a defense industry. So you were super early to SaaS then? Yeah. Wow. Now, it's expanded, obviously, a lot if people go to the website since the machine translation only days. So tell us about some of the other features that you have, some of the milestones, challenges getting these features live. One of the big milestones is uh, 10 years ago, uh, the launch of Reverso Context, which is the, the first uh, dictionary that is using uh, big data to, uh, uh, to, uh, to create dictionaries only from corpus, plus a lot of algorithm, a lot of alignment algorithms. And so today it's the most comprehensive uh, context-based dictionary where we have uh, more than a hundred uh, language combinations uh, about uh, 100 million uh, uh, segments in average in uh, each uh, language combination and, and a lot of, uh, we compute um, what nobody does, we compute the, the dictionaries based on uh, uh, different criteria, uh, but mostly based on the corpus itself. Tell me a bit more about that though. So when you say, like in practice, you get a corpus, you ingest it. And then we, we have a lot of cleaning uh, we have a lot of, uh, so we eliminate the segments which are too, too long, too, too short, uh, the ones that contain uh, special characters that can ruin the, the alignment, the ones that contain too many figures and things of this kind. And then we, we apply uh, algorithm of uh, alignment um, uh, that are a mixture of AI and uh, algorithms um, to, uh, to make sure that we, we uh, match um, word by word, but also sent the phrase by phrase. And for example, um, that's the only tool in which you can say something like, uh, uh, je m'en vais in French, and it will tell you, uh, it will align it to, I'm off, I'm going, I'm leaving, I'm uh, on my way. Uh, and so all those transitions are aligned. And so there's a lot of processing afterwards because sometimes the alignment is not precise. It goes one word too far, one word missing. And we, we correct those by a lot of different cycles. And is there the kind of a human in the loop, an expert in the loop from your side, or is it more kind of iterative? There's an expert in the loop to analyze the results and to improve the, the, the algorithms and the cleaning algorithms, the alignment algorithms. Uh, but there's no human in the loop uh, segment by segment or word by word. Got it. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a lot. <laughs> but but there, there's, for example, a human in the loop to... Uh, to decide to, to filter out uh, the rude words. So we have a list of rude words which we, uh, uh, which we define uh, manually, but so uh, uh, always it's, uh, it's never completely uh, uh, accurate, but we, we try to, to filter out so that people don't get uh, content with rude words if they, they search for something which, which is uh, completely innocent. And when we mean rude words, it's, it can be words that simply uh, are, are uh, are uh, indications that mm, content can be uh, arguable. <laughs> Got it. And, and this is mostly a, um, a the, the use case here is mostly for, uh, for people going to the website or is this something you do custom as well for enterprises? This is uh, mostly for uh, a wide public. So it's, it's uh, on the website, on mobile apps. Uh, it's, it can be integrated in other apps, but it's, uh, it's mostly uh, standard. Uh, we have a customization capability, but uh, it's, um, it's not so much used. So the, 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 because 
it's so wide already that uh, it it uh, it fits um, usage, uh, technical usage. So really, the target is from school students to transition professionals, uh, because um, a school student he can look for something like table or a window, and he will find transition examples how to use it. And a transition professional he will find a, a very uh, um, a precise uh, idiomatic phrases or uh, and he will have a lot of content to 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 choose from so it's yeah fantastic of course that's how i uh, also used it even back in, in in the days when i was a translator so you, you added a lot of other features as well you have context grammar check you know synonyms like what are some of the the highly uh, demand in demand features that you that you have as well the vessel context is really our flagship because from there uh, a lot is um, it's the way uh, the, the entry point for many uh, many searches. Uh, from reversal context, you can go to conjugation. You can go to synonyms. Uh, you can have also if you enter a longer text, you you have the result uh, produced by machine translation. And reversal context is also the place where you create your own phrasebook. So for people that want to to make uh, to improve their language skills, they can just gather. Uh, their uh, their words and expressions when they search a term on their their de mobile device. When they search a term, we we have a Chrome extension. Uh, we have desktop apps, so so they, you can bookmark when you are there, and then it creates your your. Uh, so uh, really, the entry point is reverse context for historical users, uh, and we we have uh, also the the entry point from uh, pure machine translation. But we include results from context when it's short, very short uh, searches. So when you when you search for only a word, uh, it will show you the uh, uh, the, the results uh, also from reverse of context. Uh, and we also include synonyms and rephrase inside translation, so that when you have a translation, you say, "Oh, maybe here I can have a different uh, uh, nuance or shade of meaning." You can you can click on words and get synonyms, or you can click on a sentence and get a rephrase, and so to have alternatives for for the translations. Got it. Now, in terms of how you're getting your your audience, your users, that I mean, of course, a lot of people know you, and they're basically re uh, returning uh, users, right? But in terms of acquiring new new users, like it must be super competitive in terms of SEO traffic a acquisition. How do you do that? Like, is it just because you've been there for a while and? It works. We're trying to give good answers and to to be uh, to be on top on the technical SEO, which means uh, to have our pages respond very fast, uh, to have content which is original in each uh, for each search, each query, to have a, a good uh, uh, linking interlinking between our pages, and uh, for the moment it's it's been quite uh, successful, uh, and. But we want to keep our users, and we we try to get them download the app, the apps, whether it's a mobile app or a desktop app, because then it's much easier for for people to uh, to use, uh, and uh, and uh, also people are much more engaged. So it's it's clearly uh, the, the the best way to engage people, and and the user experience for them is much better because once you are in a desktop app, for example, you can interact with any application. No advertising, very fast response, uh, and the same with the mobile app. You can use dictation. Uh, you can uh, you can save some uh, some of your searches offline. So it's it's really a, a much nicer user experience. Okay, so you're trying to steer people towards downloading the app. So you have a Mac app, and then of course in in the App Store. Uh, so the the App Store is is it is it a big multiplier for you? Like also being present there, being ranked quite high. Yes, so we we have uh, about about twenty five million downloads already. With uh, we have a rating of four point seven in both stores. Uh, people like it a lot. They are very engaged. Uh, people that uh, are using our apps use it uh, on a very regular basis, like uh, uh, twice a week on average. Uh, and and again, they use it both for search and also for. Uh, uh, for uh, keeping track of their searches and, and learn new words. Uh, so, so that's something which is uh, uh, unique that you cannot do on the web for the moment. We, we, uh, we uh, keep it only for the mobile uh, users. 
uh, and um, and also the desktop app, people are much more engaged because it's uh, they have a shortcut to to use it in any any app. So, for example, you're writing a mail, you say, "Oh, I, I have here. Uh, I would like to 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 think if I can not write it in a different way." You uh, you open the app and it will uh, give you uh, alternative rephrase alternatives, and this is uh, super useful. That must be really complicated to balance kind of the needs of like your enterprise customers, enterprise deployment with like building an app that people, you know, use regularly. How do you manage this? The technologies are the same. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's about the same as um, uh, what people do with Zoom and so on. It's, you know, in fact, when you use Zoom as a, a professional, uh, so of course the, 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 the the product has different features when you're using as professional, for example, to have a classroom where you can split and groups, etc. But this is not something that you would use on one on one. But the, the main features are the same. People look for the translation of a page, uh, the translation of a word, a, a sentence, uh, and uh, a translation of a document. And this is something that can that you can use as a student when you write your essay, or this is something that you can use as a uh, as a professional uh, marketer, uh, when you when you have done your PowerPoint that you want to to uh, to spread out, so got it. In fact, we we believe that uh, it's very complementary because uh, it allows us also to invest more on the technology, and so the technology is mostly the same, uh, and so we 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 don't have to to create two technologies. We create one technology, and then we create products that fit specifically. Uh, like for example, the mobile, uh, the mobile products, they are not so much developed in the companies just because it's not the habit of companies to, uh, uh, to manage the mobile apps, the, the generic mobile apps of, of their users, but the, 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 the usage as a, uh, as a, uh, as a web app, uh, it, on the contrary, it's something which is, uh, super useful for, for, uh, for everyone. Like, it seems like you're personally very much involved still in the development uh, of the product right now. Understand, I, hopefully I'm right, but like, how do you find it currently uh, with all these kind of highly funded startups and, and other companies and the big tech companies hiring? How, how do you find the hiring, retaining of like engineering and tech talent? So the hiring is not easy. Uh, and uh, so one of the things that we, uh, we managed to do uh, is to, to uh, keep people where they are. And so we find sometimes people that are in locations where uh, you, you don't have those uh, highly funded startups or uh, GAFAMs, and, uh, and we keep them where they are. Also, the other thing that we can guarantee to, uh, to new hires is if they, they want to do something, if they have the capabilities, they can do, they don't have to have big hierarchies, even in highly funded startups, there is red tape and we have less red tape and people that know how to make products, uh, in our company, they, they, they have, uh, a, a lot of capabilities to, to express themselves. And, you know, this is, a, uh, I want to take advantage of being here with you to say, you know, like for people that, that have those capabilities that don't want to go into, uh, uh GAFAMs or that would don't want to go in companies. Uh, because even um, in startups, uh, you, you have a, a lot of, uh, sometimes a lot of uh, internal politics and so on, which we really don't have. And that's, that's one of the, the benefits. So the, the, the drawback is that we have maybe less people or less, uh, uh, you know, less uh, uh, the, the idea of the ping pong table in, <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> that's overrated, I think. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but we have a lot of other benefits. Uh, Keeping people where they are, we have a very international team with a lot of different locations in Spain, in Canada, in Russia, uh, in Ukraine, uh, in Romania. So it's uh, uh, we have people in in many different locations, uh, and uh, that, that's uh, that's a very positive um, uh, aspect. And we we do some gathering uh, from time to time. People are very happy to to meet each other. Absolutely. And, and of course, you're, you're a proven business as opposed to a startup that, you know, may or may not be able to uh, fund the next, uh, uh, raise the next funding round, right? Um, 
Sp speaking of which, like, has this ever been a topic? I mean, have you ever done any acquisitions or aqua hires? We've done acquisition, aqua hires, not big ones, but uh, very talented people. Uh, so uh, we, we had uh, three acquisitions that were aqua hire, and that allowed us also to increase our uh, uh, our technical range. Uh, it was more for for the for the engineers that we uh, that we acquired, and we are. Uh, in the process of a, a new one on this uh, on this field, uh, so yes, definitely we are uh, we are interested in this uh, aqua hire, um, and we did. Um, so, for example, one of the uh, aqua hire that we we've done is a, a company that was um, doing a, a tool to uh, to use uh, Netflix and others to uh, to learn languages, and we we took this capability and we put that in our Chrome extension. So now you can use our Chrome extension to watch Netflix and click on subtitles with Reverso uh, translation on top of it, and uh, this, this is something that we 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 got from this uh, from this company, for example. That's a great feature, and but for you personally, it was never uh, an kind of a big consideration to take on outside funding. I mean, I think it's been bootstrapped and grown quite well, right, over the past two decades. First of all, this is my personal. Uh, ways to try first to uh, to develop business you know to to have a product to make a nice product and sell it and luckily uh, uh, we we managed to sell it we managed to get it uh, uh, out with uh, on the internet we were very early so we didn't have to buy uh, to have customer acquisition costs so uh, it was word of mouth word of mouth and and we managed to to get at the right level in companies so we acquired a lot of big uh, corporate customers uh, without having a high cost of, of acquisition. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the thing is, I, I didn't find so far people that valued us or that would take us to the next level. So if we find people that really take us to the next level without, you know, because we, we don't want to, to lose the, uh, the nice thing of independence, uh, the, the, which, which brings a lot of swiftness, agility, and so on. We don't want to lose that if it's not for something that really uh, helps us grow to the next level, like a, in order of magnitude of, you know, I don't know, 10 to go 10 times bigger in a, in a couple of years. Otherwise, if it's just funding and so on, this is not something that is so appealing to us. For maybe machine translation, just specifically, you said there you had no kind of or very little kind of customer acquisition cost early on. I mean, now it's extremely competitive, right? You've got everything from Google DeepL and Amazon and all these guys coming in. Like, how do you like see that space developing kind of the raw MT, maybe a slightly custom MT space going forward? We are lucky to have, again, a lot of uh, users, both on our website and on corporate. And the quality that we provide them is uh, on par with all the, uh, the other players. And we have additional features that others don't have, like, for example, a, uh, the, the capacity to, de to deploy locally or, uh, or uh, online. With, with, we also have secured SaaS for people who are in uh, defense industries or in uh, sensitive industries. Uh, we have also the capability of, uh, we have a training tool that works very fine if you have your own corpus, we, we know how to train very fast and very accurately. Uh, and also we have a, a tool which is available in the public and but also for companies, which is called Reverso Documents, in which you can translate documents and make the revision online. And this is something quite unique because it's it's not like the, the SDL Trados and things of the like, which are dedicated to translators. It can be for anyone that wants to translate a document. And it's easy enough so that Anyone that wants to translate the document can do its post editing online and can use also, if there is uh, a translation memory, can use uh, the translation memory inside this, this tool. Wow. That's uh, a couple of features others don't have. So uh, let's talk about a topic that I've been um, trying to parse a little bit over the past couple of months, these like large language models that are now kind of all the rage and, you know, I'm not technical enough to really understand them deeply, but I, I, I start playing around with them. I started playing around with that DALI mini version that was on Hugging Face. So point is you can put in kind of a, a text prompt, but then it draws something for you. Uh, but of course, it's also being used now for other applications, including machine translation. Uh, Long-winded way of saying like, 
I want to hear your thoughts on this. Like, is this a another kind of neural machine translation sized breakthrough for the translation localization community? Or do you feel it's kind of more theoretical? Where do you see this at the moment? There are breakthroughs all the time in our uh, industry. Like uh, now, for example, there are models that allow you to go much faster. Uh, for us today, uh, one of the, the key points on which we, we focus is keep the quality and make it faster and more efficient in terms of memory usage, because as volumes grow, uh, it's, it's really important to, to have a, a high efficiency. Uh, the, the, the quality currently we believe is good enough for, a, uh, for the usage, uh, so the general usage. If you combine all the, the customization and so on, we never had complaints about quality. So we are always looking, but we don't want to change all the time, all the, the underlying technologies if there's no uh, breakthrough. So for example, obviously when there was transformer models, it changed radically and we, we switched to transformer models uh, like three, four years ago. Um, and, uh, and, and similarly for, for currently, uh, it's the topic for grammar checker. Uh, for grammar checker, the, the, the usage of uh, AI techniques uh, is, is, of course, uh, the, the hot topic. And it's the combination also of parsing plus this. So it's, uh, and even the parsing are using now uh, uh, machine learning and AI techniques. Great. So in terms of the roadmap, is there anything you can kind of tease here? Anything that you can share with us this year, next year, anything you're launching? First of all, we, uh, we uh, have a desktop app which is going to be one of our new flagships and the desktop app will have everything. So it's one, one product that will give you translation for single words, phrases, sentences, integrated in all your applications, synonyms, Facebook plus uh, uh, correction. So everything all in one and uh, very nicely integrated and so on. This, this is uh, something on which we, we invest a lot. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is also a, a complete uh, overhaul of our mobile apps to make it even more, uh, uh, to have even more learning capabilities. Uh, to, uh, so it's, it's already used a lot for, for just searching uh, and some people use it for, for learning capabilities, but we believe that anyone uh, in fact wants to, uh, to uh, grow their vocabulary uh, uh, if it's nice, if it's fun. So to, to make it even more fun, to make it even easier to, to, uh, to discover new words and to memorize them. Because, you know, oftentimes you, you, you say, ah, yeah, I, I searched for this term, but, uh, you know, like a week after you, you don't remember it. And when it's so easy, uh, when you watch the movie and, you know, like I, I just discovered this, it gals me to say, I didn't know this phrase before. So I find it in a reverso context and then I want to learn it because, you know, it's uh, uh, or like a trailblazer. OK, so it's it's something that uh, you 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 use. Uh, it's it's more refined that to be a pioneer. And so, OK, so do you uh, how do you remember it and how do you uh, do you make sure that you will use it when you want to uh, uh, to 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 be more accurate next time you're, you're going to make a speech? Got it. So exciting. I'll uh, make sure that I downloaded everybody head over to reverso.net and uh, see the incredible range of products and features that, that Reverso offers. So Theo, this was fascinating. Thanks so much for taking the time to join the podcast today. Thank you, Florian. It was a pleasure.